Hey, deep divers. Ready to dive into a Miss Universe puzzle? A puzzle? Yeah, a real head scratcher. It's about Chelsea Manilow at the 2024 competition. Everyone thought she was a shoe in a total front runner. Right. But then she doesn't even make the top 12. What happened? It's interesting, isn't it? Because if you look at the bigger picture, Chelsea's story actually kind of shows how pageantry is changing. How so? Well, she was praised for those preliminary rounds, like, you know, the swimsuit and evening gown, but also for her advocacy work. Makes you think, doesn't it? Like, maybe what audiences and even judges are looking for in a Miss Universe is shifting. Exactly. So, okay, before we jump into the why of it all, can you paint us a picture of what the competition was actually like? Sure. Miss Universe 2024 it was in Mexico City, right? And get this, mm. a record-breaking 130 contestants. Whoa, 130? Fierce competition doesn't even begin to describe it. Oh, kidding. Our sources really stressed how tough it was this year. You have to wonder if just the sheer number of competitors played a part, you know? Oh, absolutely. The first source points to that intensity as a major factor. Imagine trying to stand out with 129 other amazing women all wanting the same thing. Right. Okay, so super tough competition. Anything else in the mix? Well, the source suggests the judging criteria themselves, right? Right. Like, we don't know the exact scores, but it's totally possible others just barely beat her out in certain areas, even if she aced others. Hmm. Can you break that down a bit? For those of us who aren't, you know, Miss Universe judges ourselves. Of course. Think about it. The judges look at so many things across all those rounds. Swimsuit. It's about physical fitness. How you command the stage. Evening gown, that's elegance and poise. Then the interviews, that's all about smarts, being well-spoken, and your opinions. Ah, so even if Chelsea was phenomenal, say, in the interview, someone else could have edged her out with swimwear or evening gown. Exactly. And you can't forget the subjective parts, too. Like what? Stage presence, that connection with the judges, those things you can't really measure, they matter a lot, too. It's funny how those little things can tip the scales. Okay, speaking of perceptions, what was the fan reaction when Chelsea didn't make the top 12? The first source, it describes it as mixed emotions, disappointment, for sure, lots of people were rooting for her. I bet. But also, tons of support praising her grace, how she handled it all. That really seems to have struck a chord with people. Can we dig into that more? Absolutely. Chelsea, she put out this post on social media after the competition was really beautiful, she made it clear that the crown wasn't the whole point of her journey, that she wanted to use her platform for causes she believes in. Which is a message bigger than any pageant, right? right. But the source mentioned some speculation, too. Yeah. Yeah. Some folks trying to figure out what might have happened, breaking down her performance. Uh-huh. And that leads us to our second source. They focus on all that online talk, specifically around the swimsuit round. Yeah. This is where it gets a little spicy. Spi well, the second source says her swimsuit portion, especially her walk. The passerella, they call it, that became a target for a lot of online criticism. She's known for being elegant, but some felt she didn't have that energy, that command that you usually see from front runners. So it's this balance between elegance and like owning the stage, especially in swimwear. Were the judges split on this or were there specific critiques? It's a great question. It could be the judges have different tastes. Right. right? What's elegant to one might seem, I don't know, too subdued to another. But the source... It does mention specific critiques about her passerella, so maybe it was also about the technical execution. Interesting. So we have this crazy competition, the judging mystery, and now the swimsuit controversy. But our second source also mentioned something unexpected that got people talking. Shoes. Oh, right. The shoes they all wore, designed by Jojo Bregeis. Those became a whole debate online. Wait, so some people are blaming the shoes. Yeah, some fans think the shoes might have messed with her walk a bit. It's important to remember, though, Jojo Bregeis. They're a big name in pageantry. They've been designing for Miss Universe contestants for years. So it's like a he said, she said online, some defending Chelsea, others critiquing her swimsuit. And then you have the Jojo Burgeis fans backing up the designer, a total social media storm. Totally. It shows you how passionate people are about pageants. Every little detail gets scrutinized. But before we get lost in all the noise, it's important to remember that one round doesn't define anyone's full potential. Right. We've seen it before. Contestants who don't win go on to do amazing things. So even though this happened, Chelsea's story is definitely not over. Mm -hmm. This could be a stepping stone to something even bigger. Absolutely. Her grace under pressure, her dedication to advocacy, those things shine through no matter what. It feels like there's a bigger story here, something beyond the stage and the score. Exactly. And that's something we'll explore more when we come back. 
We'll be right back to talk more about Chelsea's journey and what it tells us about the future of pageantry. Stay tuned. So before we went to break, we were saying how Chelsea's story, it doesn't end with Miss Universe, right? Mm. Let's talk more about her advocacy, which everyone was already praising even before the competition. Yeah, it's really striking how much focus there's been on her advocacy work. It's almost become like the main thing people are talking, e even more than the competition itself. Why do you think that is? It's like a, a sign of the times in pageantry, you know? <laughs> it's not enough to just be beautiful and poised anymore. People want more. They want to see substance, a commitment to actually making a difference. And Chelsea... She really represents that change, using her platform for things she's passionate about. You know, I looked into some of the organizations she's been involved with, and one that really jumped out was her work with Name of Organization or Cause. They're all about, briefly describe the organization's mission and work, which is such a crucial issue these days. Oh, absolutely. Name of Organization or Cause, they're doing such important work. And for Chelsea to be a part of that, it says a lot about her. Do you have any specific examples of what she's done to support them? For sure. She's been super active online, using her social media to spread the word, encourage people to get involved. And she's also participated in describe specific actions Chelsea has taken to support the cause. So it's not just posting on Instagram. She's really getting her hands dirty, you know. Yeah, you can tell it's not about publicity for her. She's genuinely trying to make things better. That's going to be inspiring to a lot of people. Actions speak louder than words, right? Exactly. It makes you think about pageantry differently. Like in the past, winning and just doing your Miss Universe duties, that was enough. But now there's this expectation that contestants are going to use their platform to actually change things, leave a mark that lasts. It's like pageantry evolving with society's values, right? Mm. People want role models who are not just beautiful and successful, but who also have a purpose who use their influence for good. In that way, Chelsea's already won, no matter what happened to Miss Universe. That's such a good point. She's changing what it means to be a successful pageant contestant, showing that real impact isn't just about a crown. What do you think is next for her? Do you think she'll keep focusing on advocacy? Knowing her passion and seeing what she's already done. I think so. Yeah, she's built this platform, she's found her voice, and she clearly wants to make positive change. This whole experience, maybe it's even helped her figure out her path, you know, opened up new opportunities for her to fight for the things she believes in. I think so, too. Maybe she'll even start her own foundation or something, building on the work she's already doing. It's exciting to think about the possibilities. I completely agree. She's got the drive, the platform, and the heart to make a real difference. It'll be interesting to see how she uses this experience moving forward. So we've talked about the unexpected results, fan reactions, all the online controversies. And now about Chelsea's amazing advocacy work. I feel like we've covered a lot, don't you? Yeah, we've gone through a lot, looking at all sides of Chelsea's Miss Universe journey. What do you think is the biggest takeaway from all of this? I think, for me, it's realizing that success isn't always straightforward. It's not just about reaching a specific goal, like winning a crown. Sometimes it's about handling challenges gracefully, speaking up for what you believe in, and inspiring people along the way. Couldn't have put it better myself. It's a great reminder that setbacks, they can actually help us grow, lead us in new directions that ultimately shape our purpose and our impact. And it's important to remember that everyone has their own story, a journey that goes beyond one event. Chelsea's Miss Universe experience, it's just one chapter in a much bigger story that's still being written, a story about resilience, determination, and using your voice for good. Exactly. Even without the crown, she's already a role model for so many people, inspiring them with her grace, her advocacy, and her spirit. And speaking of inspiration, I think it's important to acknowledge all the support Chelsea has received from fans around the world. Even with the disappointment and the online debates, there's been so much love and encouragement for her. It's amazing to see that kind of support. Yeah. It really shows the power of community, especially online. And it reminds us that social media can be a good thing, too. Sure, it can amplify negativity and drama, but it can also bring people together and create a sense of support. Absolutely. We have the power to choose what we focus on, what we amplify, and what kind of online world we want to be a part of. So let's choose to celebrate the positive, the stories that inspire us, and the people who are using their platforms to make a difference. Chelsea's journey is a perfect example of that. I think that's a wonderful thought to keep in mind. Now, before we wrap up this deep dive, one last and maybe surprising thought. You know, it's funny, we were talking about the Jojo Burgai's shoes and how some people thought they held Chelsea back. But what if we looked at it from a design perspective? Oh, that's interesting. 
It's easy to get caught up in the competition and forget about the artistry and skill involved in designing something like pageant shoes. Yeah, I love a good fashion deep dive. So tell me, what are some of the design challenges when it comes to shoes specifically for pageants? Well, think about it. They have to be glamorous, right? They've got to look amazing with those elaborate gowns and stage outfits. But they also have to be comfortable enough to wear for hours under all that pressure and with everyone watching. Right. And all those movements, the passerella, the shoes have to work with that, too. Exactly. It's not just about a pretty heel. Jojo guys, with their experience designing for Miss Universe all these years, they must have considered all that. So instead of judging the shoes as good or bad, maybe we can look their design choices, you yeah. know. The materials they use, the heel height, the overall look they were going for. Yeah, I get it. It shifts the focus away from blame and towards appreciating the design process. All the thought that goes into making shoes that work for a pageant. Exactly. It's a chance to recognize the art and the technical skill that often gets overlooked. And who knows, maybe this whole thing will get people talking more about fashion and pageantry in general. How much should the designer's vision matter versus the contestant's own style? How can we make sure the shoes help not hurt the performance? Those are some great questions. It really shows how even something like shoes can spark so many different conversations. And it reminds us that even in a pageant, there's always more than meets the eye. Absolutely. It's been a fascinating journey unpacking all these layers of this Miss Universe competition. I hope our listeners have enjoyed exploring all these different viewpoints with us. I know I have. From the unexpected outcome to the online buzz and all the deeper thoughts about advocacy and even design, this deep dive has been full of surprises. And Chelsea's story, it's just getting started. I can't wait to see what she accomplishes and the impact she's going to make. Me too. She's an inspiration, showing us the power of resilience grace, and using your voice for good. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into Chelsea Manilow's Miss Universe journey. Until next time, keep on diving deep, everyone. And remember, there's always something interesting to discover when you look beyond the surface.